back. Ciao. We are back. <laughs> Andrea, how are you? I'm doing good. Ciao, Franz. Ciao, everybody. Uh, doing good. Thank you. Thank you. It's about, uh, what, one month or a few days and one month to the next Second World Straduno. Yes, correct. How many, please, I want to know how many times you went to the beach this uh, the last week? Because now the sun, the, the sun is yes. high and beautiful and warm mm -hmm. and you are in La Spezia, so I'm really jealous of you. <laughs> I went to the beach uh, today and well, a couple of times this week, so it's uh, <laughs> three in the past week, I guess. <laughs> you're 10 you're 10 now. Uh, working at night working at night so it's okay now we we don't have any more limitation with the curfew we, uh, we can close anytime we want so yesterday mm -hmm. I went to sleep at 3 o'clock which has been the first time in like two years <laughs> I loved it <laughs> we, a little bit drunk too a little bit trying to perfect. We are getting back to the yeah. We are really seeing the light uh, at the end of the tunnel. Uh, but anyway, you know, three o'clock is still kind of early for the scaletta. We all remember, you know, because normally you will do yeah, till the dawn. Uh, you know, we want we want to change. We want to change our ways. Uh, now we're opening early and working better uh, on food and drinks, uh, food and beverage. Uh, our focus now. It's not really about uh, just getting drunk but still that helps <laughs> and, and that is welcome <laughs> not always getting drunk but also eat a little bit that's the new way the new mission is uh, you know getting drinks but also food that's beautiful and actually i cannot wait to visit you next week because we are going to have a little bit of preview of yeah. in La Spezia. sure we see each other in a week uh, on Friday, you're gonna you're gonna do a DJ set uh, at yeah. the club here, and also on the Saturday we're gonna have uh, another event, uh, and you're gonna play music too on the on, on the turntable. So that yeah, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. Yeah. And all our friends from uh, Panco Caduno, uh, people from the staff is invited. Some of the some of them are coming, and also yep. all our friends uh, in the area are welcome to, to come and say hi. Exactly. We are going to have, uh, you know, just because we didn't see so many friends for so long that we want to take every possible chance to see all of you. So you're invited to yeah, La Spezia exactly. next week. I I'm very sorry because these guys don't know what they got themselves into, asking me to <laughs> spin some records on Friday. And mm -hmm. uh, I just came back from, uh, you know, we organized the Bergamo Pride this weekend and it went really well. And I just did a seven hours uh, DJ set during the afternoon and it was a really warm day. So I guess all my records are fucked because, you know, they... they <laughs> <laughs> it's been records in the sun and they, no, they are all today. Okay. melted now but you know <laughs> and uh, i even got requests you know now like when when there was a lot of people i even got like a really young kid coming to me and, and he told me like he's the first time i request a song i want the rolling stones and so i played in the, the rolling stone yeah no exactly I, Not that. <laughs> and, 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 going into rock now exactly <laughs> That's the, what the mom knew. The, the mom told me something like, it's since the beginning uh, he got into the club that he's watching you spinning records just like an alien. I don't know if I if I should take it as a as a good thing or a bad just thing. Like, but, you know, like the, this this kid looking at you like... Oh. Wow. So I felt, also, yeah. Another thing I read on the news uh, is that uh, pop punkers are getting uh, mm, trendy and popular as boyfriends again. Like, what? <laughs> I... You know, people playing punk rock and pop punk are getting popular as boyfriends for famous uh, uh, female stars again after 20 years. Like uh, those drummer from Blink-182, he, he's with a, with a famous chick I don't know about. And also the, <laughs> the other guy, Machine Gun Kelly, he, he's with a famous actor that's called Megan Fox. So Perfect. this is a new trend. So Next fun. one is gonna be me. It's gonna your be hopes me. Up. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. I'm single and I'm into pop punk, yes. And so, you know, again, ready to get, uh, you know, some action again. Hopefully, let's see. <laughs> we see. <laughs> well, no, um, what we gotta say about the um, second world star, you know, coming in a month, uh, I can do a recap if you want to. Yes, please. We announced so far. 
Yes, go ahead. Okay, let's go. Uh, so far, we announced the Apers reuniting on the Saturday night. <laughs> we have the Judah headlining on the Friday night. Uh, mm -hmm. On the Friday night, the Mugwumps are playing too. And on the Saturday, we're going to have we'll also have Comet from Italy. Yes, great. New from band. Austria. Proton mm -hmm. Packs from Italy. And mm -hmm. New Real Disaster from Italy. Mm -hmm. at the end Tuesday. Then we also announced that on the Friday, we're going to have Palmy and the Homograms opening the night. Beautiful. Uh, for Judah and Magwams. Yeah, that's a very cool lineup. Uh, and on the Sunday, there's going to be a bunch of acoustic sets. Uh, so far, we announced that Kurt Baker is going to be there and uh, Nando and Sebi from Senza Benza. And yes. also me uh, with uh, Stefanino. Uh, we're gonna play a few songs. Uh, That's gonna be the best part. Yeah. I'm really yeah. looking forward to you. It's, Your it's first, gonna be my first time, yeah, uh, ever. <laughs> your first time playing acoustic, you know, your songs from your different bands, acoustic. Yeah. That's something we don't want to miss. So again, a recap: Friday evening, we have three bands announced. Saturday, yeah. we are gonna have different stuff, probably in different locations too, but mainly at Edonet. And then we have the Sunday brunch. So we are going to start uh, at 11 o'clock with the uh, acoustics. Okay. And uh, so you have to reserve. It's free entrance again, but as is a contingent entrance, because we cannot allow the, uh, as many people as before, at least until the next year. So you have to reserve. You, you go to punkrockraduno.com and you go to, you know, reserve page and you have yeah. all the information. And uh, we actually have uh, many people coming from different countries, so I'm really happy about that. Yeah, exactly, because um, also people can travel across Europe uh, and it's, it's getting open uh, a bit again and people are starting to book their holidays. Uh, where I live, for example, uh, it's been like this for about, uh, I don't know, 10 days that I, mm -hmm. I see tourists again, foreign tourists again. Uh, in my area, which is uh, something no Americans, of course, no Chinese, mm. <laughs> but there are many tourists from Europe uh, in my area now, and uh, this makes me really happy to see that things are slowing, getting back to normal. Hopefully, uh, we're gonna see. Uh, we, we, we'll never be out of this thing until we're out of this thing <laughs> for real, yeah. and we realize that it's over. So I'm not gonna say anything more than. I'm happy that I see things going for the better now. Yes, and until we can have the Punk Rock Raduno 5, which means the Punk Rock Raduno we were planning and we want and we love, you know, the one that where we all hug and we all smell and we all, you know, get in contact. Uh, you know, we are going to do the second worst Raduno and it's going to be beautiful because for many of us, it's going to be the first show and in particular the first punk show that people is going to see since uh, either last year or 18 months. So it's going to be very emotional. Please, 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 if you want to attend, book your you know place now. And uh, also, if you cannot attend because you live far away or live in America, you just have to subscribe and follow the page on Twitch of Panko Corduno. We are already have 200 people you know, following us, which is great because we just started this. And uh, you are going to stream... Yeah, yeah. Wow, it's good. <laughs> and uh, we we are gonna stream the World Festival, and we are gonna have Kurt Baker as a you know host. So it's gonna be you know real English speaking, <laughs> <For real. laughs> not like last year where we, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no. we had fun, but uh, we did, we did what we could. Not Italian English, uh, like <laughs> and uh, of course, if, if, uh, you know we. Oh. For to all the people that is joining right now, if you want to ask questions, to say you're more than welcome in the comment section, and in particular because we are gonna have this beautiful, you know, guest soon, he's already ready. And uh, well, I I guess we, did we did we say everything we had to say, Andrea? I believe we did. I just wanted to say the next year we're gonna have Raduno Five, and. Mm -hmm. uh, the guest we have tonight is going to be there. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, you know, there, there are not enough words to describe this guy because, in my opinion, 
I don't know if you agree with me, is not only one of the best punk rock songwriters in history, but is also one of the best songwriters in history, period. He's also <laughs> a great hey. punk rocker, great guy. I toured with him a lot. You toured with him. And uh, he's just, you know, lovely person, really down to earth. And, uh, you know, one of those guys that really did a lot for the scene. And, uh, you know, I guess... Is also one of the reasons, living reason why punk rock do not exist. You know, <laughs> like we sing along every song of him, and uh, you know, we always yeah. follow what he does. So. He's got some of the biggest hits uh, in the sing along uh, area. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and the biggest <laughs> late night DJ set hits as well. <laughs> yeah, it, it's all his. You know, it's all his. So welcome, welcome, welcome to our old body. From St. Louis, Danny Vapid. Hi, oh, Dan. <laughs> hey, how are you, Andre? Good, uh, good to see you. How's it going? I was, it's We're fine. Good. Just, yeah. We are doing good. We we wanted to know about you because we haven't seen you uh, in Bergamo for uh, I believe a couple of years now. Yeah, and, uh, I know. We have we have many memories and uh, the That's video awesome. of you playing at our festival, which is still. Uh, you know, full of emotions. And for every time you rewatch it, <laughs> it's still yeah. it's still legendary. And uh, so, the first thing I wanted to ask you is uh, what what have you been doing in the past couple of years? How have you been? Uh, you know, I just uh, I have three small children, so they take up a lot of time. Work at the post office, so um, that takes up most of my day. But um, you know, I still still write a lot of music. Um, I just tend to like, you know, dabble like before I go to work in the morning or before like late at night, just kind of hum and type, do that a lot. So I have a lot of songs. Uh, you know, I was working on a, a record uh, that I started in October 2019 and uh, it got put on hold with the whole COVID thing. But yeah. uh, we just got back to it just recently and uh it's almost done so it should be done by uh should be out by by fall and i already got another record beyond that so <laughs> it's just because of the last year just sitting around and 2020 was nothing but a dystopian uh craziness uh you know it it, it had some influence on uh some stuff going on so yeah you know just stuff like that just a lot of a lot of just you know normal domestic kind of stuff but then music um when i can you know yeah. so, yes you cannot you cannot stay far away from music for for, for, for no, much no i i can't i can't <laughs> looks, like, looks like it's your passion <laughs> it's, it's, we already got the best news since the news of the vaccine you know, yeah. then Vapid has a lot of new songs. So this is, you know, for us, this is the best news since the news of the vaccine. Yeah. So then it, it is beautiful to, to see you. And actually the fact that you are a postman, you know, not only brings yeah. me back, you know, the of course, the, the beautiful uh, Hey Mr. Postman song. And I wonder if you always sing that while you are doing the, the postman. But also the fact that, you know, the postman and the post in general was really important in the last election. Oh, you know, I saw you posting a lot about that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. No comment. You know what I mean? I don't know who's watching from the post office. <laughs> be quiet. Uh, I don't want to talk to my boss. Um, <laughs> no, we, we have to stay quiet about these things publicly, but um, you probably can guess how I feel about it, huh? <laughs> yes, we all feel person. the same way. Yes. Think, how do you think I feel about it? You know, that's beautiful. That yeah. is, no, you, you know, I can I can say something. You know, you you don't have to to lose your job. But today, yeah. you know, I come from Bergamo Pride, and last night, you know, we had a sort of fascist neo fascist attack. Not really an attack, but they they just put up some posters. You know, because yesterday we had this big manifestation in town about, you know, the the, the, the pride and uh, of the LGBT plus uh, world. Yeah. And uh, they put up some uh, some posters about, you know, they, they, they did a mess and it was really stupid. But I was looking for some images, you know, online on, on, on those Instagram 
you know, uh, GIF, animated GIF. And I was looking for something like anti-fascist. And I found a lot of GIF about the post office with the, you know, leather box, which like this machine kills fascists. Yeah. You know, that, that was really, you know, watching from uh, outside of America. That was really something good. So know, knowing that you are, you know, also, you know, not only a punk walker, not only a songwriter, not only, you know, uh, you know, and I don't go on with this. So the other thing is that when we can expect the new record to be out, you think? Well, I'm thinking probably around fall. I'm thinking it should be okay. done probably in the next couple of weeks. Oh, okay. So, so you're already recording? Yeah, it's at the, we're at the very end of it. Okay. So, uh, so it's going to be Dan Vampy than the it? Cheats? Yeah. 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 Still Dan Vampy and Cheats. And so then when that's done, I'm going right back in again. <laughs> so what what we can expect, like it's going to be different from the previous one. It's going to be like, uh, this is going to be the fourth one, right? It'll be the fourth one. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there's some things that are similar, some things that aren't, you know, I mean, with this band, like when we started, I, I thought like I wasn't going to like, um, I don't know what the word is, maybe niche right or something. Like when I was in the Methadones, I wanted songs to sound like the Methadones. I was in the Riverdale, yeah. I wanted songs to sound like the Riverdales. With this, I don't really care. You know, I, <laughs> I'll do whatever. If it sounds like a Riverdale song, that's fine. It sounds like a Methadone song, that's fine. If it sounds like a Sludger song, that's fine. If it sounds like none of the above, that's fine. You know, just kind <laughs> of whatever just feels right, just kind of go and and do it you know i'm too old to care about like <laughs> anymore you Good know what song. i mean you just just do it have your fun let it out let the chips fall you know beautiful nice. of course we don't have to introduce you and say like you played in so many great bands is there you know the river days meta dancers screeching weasel uh, sludge word and uh, mopes is there a band that you feel might like more yours like you, you say like okay that is more like exactly what i wanted to do and uh, how i accomplished or there you know being all your child you know you you feel the same for all the same bands yeah i mean like each project kind of had a, a, well, like say for like the Riverdales, for example, like the record right behind you, I'm looking at it. Um, that was the, that was kind of how I always wanted to sound. It took five records to get there, but it, it, I felt like we we got there at that record. Now that's just my, yeah. opinion. I know other people feel, well, I, mean, I, you know, I don't know, but that's like, that was more like how I envisioned the band early on. And I just felt like we just weren't getting there, but like, I, yeah the results anyway i thought they were cool records and all but that was more like how i wanted the band to sound so yeah. um so you know so there's that with that i mean like just with the methadones maybe some of the later records with that as well but i don't know it's just it just kind of depends uh yeah. i'm kind of all over the place with this stuff you know you might ask me this in a week i might have a different answer for you you know <laughs> not not with that record but with other just stuff in general Anyway, and, and now you're all gone. No, yeah. how many how many albums have you been on? I mean, did you write at least one album a year? I believe. Yeah, I, I probably. Project. Yeah, I mean, I probably do more than that because they, a lot of them, a lot of material doesn't get released as well. So I just like, I've got a lot of like songs that have been sitting around for a long time. You know, so um, with this next thing that I'm doing, I'm I'm planning on like half of it at least is going to be stuff that has been sitting for seven, eight years. Like I haven't been able to find it a home, you know. So, uh, yeah. So I'm looking forward to getting it out of my system. You know, it's just like been humming in my, you know. And I, I have a I have a question. I, I, I want I, to. <laughs> I, I remind, I, I recall um, that I read in an interview that you um, uh, brought songs uh, for for the river. They study from the title, and uh, this I believe this was happening when you had a collaboration uh, and you were writing together with Ben, or at least uh, you were committed to the, to a project together. But now that you're on your own, uh, how do you find the inspiration to start with? Because as a songwriter, I understand that a little help, someone that gives you just a title or just a phrase to start with can be a good way to go on and write everything 
down. So what, what do you do by yourself? Well, well, I think for inspiration, like I think um, I got I, a lot of ways I can answer this, but like one of one of them is just I just really enjoy it. So I always want to do it. So because I enjoy it so much, I always find something and I always find mm -hmm. some way to tie it into some point of my life or something that I've observed or whatever. But beyond that, I think you can get you can get like influence beyond just listening to music. I mean, you can listen to other kinds of music and get influence. You can watch movies and get influence. You could read books and get influence. You could have conversations and have an influence for a song. Um, you can pick up the newspaper and get influence for a song. You know, you can take, if you're a guitarist, pick up a bass. If you're a drummer, pick up a guitar, you know, mm -hmm. vice versa. You know, there's all, pick up different instruments, just do, you know, if like, if you haven't written a song in a while, don't try to write a song, you know, just laugh, laugh at it. And then next thing you know, you might have something, you know, um, it's, I think like the more, like the more you try, the worse it can be, you know? So just kind of have fun with it. Do it. That's it. Nice. And it's in every, I think it's in everything too. Like, you know, like you can find, you can find it anywhere, no matter where you live, you know, what, what background, culture, anything, you know, it, it, there's, there's a song to be made there. <laughs> so that's my view of it anyway. I know other people have different views of it, but. Ah, sure, sure. No, I, I share I share part of your uh, process, and uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I had the same thoughts about some writing. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, but like if you're saying specifically with the title and all that, yeah, that helps too. If you well, have, of course. Sometimes somebody will say something in passing, and it'll just kind of strike you, and you'll be like, "Huh, okay." And then next thing you know, it shows up. You know, so yeah. Anyway. So yeah, this is great. I mean, I it's just something I've always liked doing for a long time. So it's good to be able to do stuff like this and have people care, you know. So thanks, thanks for having me. <laughs> But I always wonder because now you also did the two uh, two album for kids, and in mm -hmm. your songs, you you just write like beautiful pop songs, you know, in in a way that pop uh, like with melody, with a good structure, you know, pops that can be. You know, played acoustic, not only in a punk version. And so I always wondered, like, do you do you ever feel the need of changing the formula? Because of course, you know, uh, you know, we know methadons are different than Riverless and different than the Screeching Weasel, but they are all in the let's say rock and roll punk world. You know, did you ever felt like the need of changing and say like doing an acoustic record or doing something like? Like, uh, for example, experimental record with your song or stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I plan on getting to all that eventually. Like, I don't. I, I like. I listen to a lot of stuff. Like, yep. I mean, I'm known for the for for pop punk, but you know, I listen. I like a lot of rock and heavy metal and early rock and roll and early country and I like a lot of indie music. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I just. I like a lot of stuff, so I just kind of, I like to just kind of try to do a little bit of everything at, at some point, you know. Uh, so the answer is, I, I think, yeah, you know, I'd like to try to try out some things. I probably would never go, I probably still always write a punk song, you know what I mean? Yeah. Not like, um, you know, don't be too surprised if you find something in the future that's like kind of not something you're expecting because I, You know, I'm. It's been kicking around in there, so I don't know. Yeah. Does that answer your question, or I don't know? No, no. I, because I remember touring with you that you played me some demos, and they were beautiful because they were not in the form of a punk song, uh, uh, you mm -hmm. know, at all. You know, there were some uh, uh, keyboards in there, and they were, you know, that 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 they felt like, oh, they, it's like it's great to hear you in in, in different oh, formulas and stuff like that. So. I can't remember that actually, but okay. <laughs> no, I, 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 you know, you really impressed me. But you know, you mentioned that you listen to a lot of stuff. Is, is there any new music or bands that you are following that you really inspire you right now, like modern you're stuff? At, you're gonna laugh at what I'm gonna say. And Please do. It, it took me 51 years to 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 discover Bob Dylan. <laughs> really? How it happened? I have no fucking idea. I hated <laughs> Bob Dylan my entire life. 
<laughs> and I did a deep dive from Simon. And there was a song, there was a couple songs I started to kind of slowly like. And then I'm like, oh, let me let me hear that some of this early shit that wasn't on the radio. Yep. And I just started to freaking love it. And now I love Bob Dylan. How that happens, like I said, I, I have no idea. I spent my <laughs> well, whole life yeah. being Bob Dylan, and now I now I've been transformed at this stage of my life. So just uh you know, lyrical genius. I guess that's what it what pulled me in, you yeah. know. It's so 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 good. Um so <laughs> that's kind of one thing that uh, I think probably would surprise some people. Um I really like Death Cab for Cutie a lot. I mean, they're one of my, I really, really love them like, like crazy. Uh, yeah. I think the guy's just a genius of a songwriter. Um, you know, but it's funny, like I'll listen to that and I'll listen to like our early Beatles and then like the Kinks or like, uh, you know, whatever, you know, um, like early punk stuff and then put on like, uh, you know, something that's later and not, not really think much about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, so, and there is something that your kids listen to and that you enjoy? Um, you know, like they, they kind of like more metal kind of sounding stuff. <laughs> really? Like if I, yeah, if I put on like, you know, something like a little faster and like kind of, I don't know, like I remember my son was like really into like, um, Paranoid by Black Sabbath. Yeah, really, that was a cool song, you know. And I'm like, yeah, this is a cool song, you know. Um, you know, they they've kind of responded to like Twisted Sister and like you know, uh, you know, they like the Ballroom Blitz by the Sweet. Just stuff like that they've responded to the most. Other than that, like, um, you know, they're I don't think they're they're really like me in terms of like music, but I think they like it at the same time yeah. you know when i was their age i was already buying records and being i was like really super into it so they're not really like that but you know they're into their own things but they like music a little bit you know that's nice beautiful beautiful what and, and what they think about your music um i don't think they think much of it really i my daughter i think kind of digs it a little bit uh and my oldest son i i don't I think he's kind of indifferent about it, to be honest. He's like, oh, okay, dad's music, okay. <laughs> you know, I mean, they've seen me on, like, YouTube and stuff, and they're like, oh, that's kind of interesting. And then, like, second later, they're, like, watching something about Minecraft or something, you know what I mean? <laughs> so they don't really care that much, you know. I'm just dad, which is good. So, so they, you never show them like videos of Raduno, you know, because everyone still yeah. talks about, you know, your shows at Raduno and yeah. in, in our mind is the, the top, you know, of what we reach at is like you, CJ Ramon, you know, those moments that you played and there were like, you know, thousands of people there like yeah. singing along, hugging, crying, you know, people got really emotional when you did the River the set of your songs. That was a fun night. Yeah. Um, I had a blast. Um, yeah, he, I mean, I played that for them and they, they thought it was cool, you know? <laughs> and again, like it was like, you know, a second later they're around to something else. <laughs> it doesn't really register. Like maybe it would with somebody else. I don't know. Just kind of, yeah. kind of how it is. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay in the house, I guess. Uh, I, uh, I, be, I believe uh, if you, if you live with people that are always praising you, as an artist, uh, I think it could get in your head. It's better. It's better to live with people that treat you as, you know, the, yeah. Yeah, a very, yeah. uh, regular guy yeah. that never did anything oh. like that. And when you get the chance to go out and be yourself uh, with the with the music and your passion, but you don't take it home, you don't take it with you, so you keep uh, the your foot on the ground uh, and still, <laughs> be, right, and still right. the will uh, the will to 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 do more. I believe. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, the where I live is like that, too. People don't like, you know, punk rock where I live. So, you know, there's a lot of uh, a lot of anonymity with that. So, like, you know, yeah. <laughs> but the, you live in, in St. Louis right now? Like it's, you, like you, a, it's in southern Illinois, yeah. About yeah. four or five-minute drive, yeah. Cool, cool. 
And uh, I was wondering, you know, there has been a lot of, you know, uh, documentaries and books and stuff about, you know, that particular lookout moment and scene, you know, there has been like the lookout zoom out, you, you've been part of it. So a lot of people still interested and still, you know, really worshipping like that particular label and that particular moment. So I was just wondering, like, how you feel about that? Because you kept doing stuff, you know, you you never basically stopped. Like you, you, you went from, you know, that moment and then you went on with different bands. But uh, do you think there was, uh, there is too much nostalgia now about that? Or, you know, also about regarding, like, we interviewed, like, Larry Livermore about his book and stuff like that. Yeah. How do you, what do you remember about the, that particular era and uh, how you feel about, you know, all these documentaries and uh, how we see now that period of time? Um. Well, in some ways it's, it, in some ways, it's pretty interesting. I mean, especially in like when you talk about Green Day, you know, because that they're okay. so big, you know. And so, like when I see like early, like early footage, say of you know Gilman Street or wherever, you know, a um, lot of that, I, you know, I, I look back, I go, wow, you know, I, I can remember playing with them, and there was thirty people there, you know. Yep. So there's that there's that thought a lot. And so that's just kind of interesting to see a band really explode from that scene. And then there's just a lot of like, oh, I wonder what such and such is up to now, you know, or, um, you know, I wonder if they play anymore. I don't know. Um, so I, yeah, I think about it a little bit, but um, mostly, you know, I, I don't really think about that time really that, that often i mean when i do see a documentary or something like that then yeah then i'm kind of back in that place but if you were to ask me like normally i don't really think about any of those any of that time or any of those really those records really you know <laughs> i mean until it's like a time like this and then we're because uh from our point of view from our point of view uh Probably uh, when you when uh, the records of the death scene uh, in the early '90s, the lookout bands uh, were still playing in front of 30 people. Somehow, in a moment, uh, the day records were all over the world because of the Green Day getting popular, uh, because of the second wave. So all of a sudden, you're still playing in front of 30 people, but at the same time, uh, a kid like uh, myself can go to a record shop and buy a record in Italy, <laughs> and then. Uh, uh, I believe it was uh, about a year or two that we saw you. You the first time you played Italy, it was opening from Green Day. Uh, I remember it was about uh, right. ten thousand in the attendance. It was a huge show. So right. uh, you got from the thirty people to the huge show, and then uh, uh, a few years after, it, it, it all got uh, slow again. So I, I believe it, it's not easy to leave it. Uh, and analyze it uh, uh, at the same time. You guys lived it probably, and uh, you know didn't realize what happened until later. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's it's definitely yeah been kind of crazy. Um, I don't know. I was just thinking like I kind of understand the band that's opening. You know that that are just starting because I've been there and I've been in the band in the middle and I've been in the headlining band. You know, so I. I feel like at this point, I understand all three levels in <laughs> sense, you know, um, and what what confronts you at those levels. Hopefully, I'm not making. Hopefully, I'm making sense here. I'm trying to trying to articulate what I'm thinking here, but there's yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you know, being in an open band versus being a band in the middle, being a headlining band. Yeah, I believe the good thing is that the. Uh, um, you, you, we have to be uh, all humble and be in the opening band and the headlining band, and we don't care because uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. when you started, when you started, you thought you were the opening band and you go, you were going to be the opening band forever. So yeah. if you if you if you were real at the time, uh, you still uh, gotta have the the the. the will to be the opening man anyway <laughs> that's what I, that's what i believe and then you know you can be the 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 biggest fish in a small more pond and you but you can also you know uh, be the opening band for some bigger band so 
doesn't really matter as, as long as you do good music and you keep on. Uh, I believe uh, I believe it doesn't really matter uh, which level you get. Of course, uh, when, when it gets yeah. into your personal life because you, you your music uh, become a part of your job or anyway a source of income, uh, there are different things that you have to take care of. But I believe uh, your passion must stay the same. You wake up, you think about music, uh, you want to play music. Uh, and also, it's not all about music, but of course, if you are a, a whole person <laughs> with other interests and uh, qualities, uh, it's better, <laughs> of course. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to like be only, the, like only music would probably uh, be kind of, destructive i think it basically would mean living in your head 24 hours a day you know so i would advise against that don't do it <laughs> but, but there was a moment in your life that you were hoping or you know you plan to be a musician full time like there, there was a moment that you said like okay this is what i'm gonna do and i'm gonna be you know a musician yeah yeah yeah, yeah. There, there definitely had that a lot and then like you know, when the methadones had started, I, I that's kind of what I wanted to do. And it just, I, I couldn't get it there, you know, okay. uh, for, for many reasons. And I think a lot of it was, you know, was touring. I toured as much as I could, but a lot of, a lot of labels were really interested in signing us. But it was like, how much do you tour? You know, I'm okay. like, oh, I tour when I can, you know, like I'm just they're not really happy with that. They want, you know, they want the commitment of like, you're going to be out there six months a year. Cool. You're with us. You know what I mean? If not, yeah. you know, then we will, you know, sign the next, uh, the next batch of uh, fresh faces that uh, are going to go out and, and, and do it for six months or eight yeah. months a year. You know, at least that was my experience. I mean, cause like yeah. those, times of like you know i think like screech and weasel didn't really tour much operation ivy didn't really tour much but besides those two bands i can't think of any band ever that really you know made a pretty big name for themselves without doing that without going down that path i can't think of any for some for some reason those two bands are kind of like the anomaly but um you know so I think, you know, that was one of the problems that I had. And after a while, it was just like, you almost like, it's almost like this thing too, where like you're kind of waiting for something to happen. And like, okay. this keeps going by and keeps going by. You're like, I got to shut this door. I got to move on with my life. If it's not, if something doesn't, <laughs> you know, if you can't make it, if you can't make it happen, eventually, and I write about that a lot, actually, in, in a lot of new songs. It's like a letting go of, of, of shit you know letting go of yeah. dreams even you know you don't really want to but you you have to face facts you know so yeah. there was a point um you know probably about seven years ago six seven years ago i'm like i, I can't i can't like wait around and hoping you know to uh to to be this musician that's going to go out and, and 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 earn a living anymore it's just not going to happen you know um so um so I got a job at the post office, you know. Yeah, well, but so but you, you still, people, you know, you, you're still free to to do the songs, which is you know yeah, what yeah. is important for us. But it you know, right. I mean, and at the end of the and that's the thing. At the end of the day, it's like you know we all got to make ends meet. But um, you know, I would be doing it if I made money or not. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter if I mean even if I lose money, I'm still gonna do it. You know what I mean? I just want to. I wanted that to be the livelihood. It didn't work out that way. So it hasn't really changed anything. It's just, I'm not out touring yeah. all the time or whatever, you know, I just do what I can do and just keep moving forward. So. Well, as long as you can come back every year to Aduno and play for us, yeah. you know, it's, it's mean, fine if you don't tour to me, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. you know, even if I right. want to tour with you, because I toured with you and that, that tour we did with them, Rapid and the Cheats, how many years ago was that? Many years ago. Probably you know, that was special. I think it was a 2014, I think. Yeah, that was great. Right, right on then. Yeah, <laughs> that was great. I love that tour. Yeah, I love, love playing Italy. I mean, I just yeah. really just like Italy in general. Really, I, I love it. Because it's so different from where I'm from, you know. Where I'm from, everything's flat. 
in Illinois. Yep. Well, um, we have a lake, Lake Michigan, but you yep. know, tall buildings. That's kind of nice. They're newer, but you guys have this old, all this history and you have the culinary traditions and just different wines and just rolling hills and just all kinds of just, you know, and crazy punk rock fans, you know? So. Yeah. Why do you think, you know, you have this, you know, in, in Europe, but in particular in Italy, you know, you have these really dedicated fans. And in general, going back to the, 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 the topic of Lookout Records, why do you think so many people are still devoted to that particular scene or that particular band? You know, do you think there is something particular about it? Because, you know, it, it's, it seems like it never goes uh, out of fashion, you know. People still talk about that moment, still talk about that band, and they are still, you know, coming to the shows and singing along. And, mm -hmm. you know, what, did you ever ask yourself why? Or, you know, that, that thing in particular, not, you know, is a quality thing or is a... Not really sure. No, I've, I, I haven't asked myself that question. I'll think about it, though. We'll get back to you. <laughs> <laughs> Because maybe Italians have good taste, so they like your music. Yeah, <laughs> I appreciate that. I believe, I believe uh, the Italians have a, a particular um, sense of uh, melody. And I think uh, Dan uh, has a very catchy, uh, ma many, many catchy melodies in, in, in his songs. Yeah. And this is probably one of the reasons why Italians like you uh, a lot. That's right. what I think. <laughs> Franz, I think you you would like to know. I, I I did write a song called "I Should Be in Bergamo Today." <laughs> <laughs> you should be in Bergamo today, That's, actually. And That's it a, will be not on the next album, but the one after that. Yeah. Beautiful. I cannot wait. That yeah, makes me very very happy. Pandemic and having to be at home and not being able to go to Bergamo. So, um, and I came out really good. I'm I'm pretty pretty stoked on it. So, um, that will be out eventually. I, I'm talking like pretty far in the future here, but um, we're getting there one day at a time. But yeah, the song's done. So, well, you're gonna be in Bergamo next year because the Methodons are gonna play Punk Rock Aduno Five. So you know, there you go. You're gonna be, you're gonna be here. And and if you release that song, you know, uh, we have to give you, the, you know, the citizenship of the city. You know, <laughs> we have that thing that people, you know, that does something for the city. So we have to. Submit that and say yeah, like, yeah. okay. I could do a, like two versions of it or something. I'll give you one <laughs> and I'll give, you know, put the other one on a record. Because I know I want it on a record already. So Yes, perfect. Oh, I can... The mayor of Bergamo with the keys of the town. Yes. <laughs> and we can use it for some Raduno uh, promotion as well. <laughs> yes, yes. That's yeah. beautiful news. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. It makes me really happy. It makes you really happy. Yeah, and, uh, I'm, looking, I'm looking forward to next year. You know, things getting back to normal, and and you know we're getting there. You know, so yeah. I, I yeah. you know, like I said, people are getting vaccinated now. I've been thinking about half of the United States is vaccinated, and what were you you guys saying earlier? It was about the same for you guys, or not uh, quite? I believe we're we're about one third, no, less than one third of the population now, but uh, we're speeding up. Uh, we've been very, very late with the vaccine party <laughs> in the, in the, at the beginning of this year, but now the, it's really speeding up. So I believe we're going to be done by September, October. And uh, so, of course, when there will be new variants, so <laughs> who knows what's going to happen. But we should be done by October, if I read correctly, correctly on, the, on the news. I got my first yeah. shot and... Uh, you know, people people of old age are mostly all vaccinated now, so that's good. Yeah, for the first did, you your, did you get sick at all from your from your shot? No, no just uh, uh, my my arm was hurt. Your arm. Yeah, yeah, okay. and that, that was it. But no, I was okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, people, people, people already demand for the seven inch of the new song. You know, they, they want the seven. They want the seven inch of the new song of oh, uh, yeah. "I Should Be in Bergamo." What? Can you play that? Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Ah, ah, ah. Sorry. I'm taking it hard, sitting in my backyard, a good lying in the grass. 
sky is overcast. The weather man has predicted rain. You don't say. I should be in Bergamo today. I should be in Bergamo today. So that's all I'm going to play. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks Thank you. For the course. And then the course will be that and a bridge. And you guys get the idea. But that's it. Um, so, yeah, that's about like going, fuck, this sucks. I'm supposed to be in Bergamo. You know? <laughs> oh, you, you don't know how many well, people you right. made happy. Well, funny that's... and sad kind of thing, you know. Yeah. Um, anyway, so I don't know. What are people saying over there? Beautiful. We need a seven inch, yeah. David says. <laughs> and also Pulce says the same. And also, you know, there is a <laughs> there is a play one song, please. Again. Okay, so, um, <laughs> is there anybody that wants to hear anything? I'll, I'll play. Yeah. That. Yeah. Exactly, guys. Give us uh, yeah, well first best. one that posts the, the the name of a song that he gets that song. Maybe. Let's see what what they are saying. My favorite Dan Vapid song is Crash of the Moons. <laughs> oh yes, that, that, that has been my favorite like forever. All so, right, since I'm for the first time. Yeah. You want to do that? Yep. If you want. Oh, baby, oh baby, oh baby, I wish I could go back. I wish I could go back. Oh, baby, oh, baby, oh, baby, I get you better than that, so much better than that. So what you don't know isn't gonna hurt you. We'll be long gone soon from the crash of the moon.
Thank you, Dan. Ah, beautiful. We say pel de polla in Bergamo. <laughs> you know, we say like uh, pel de polla is like skin of a, a chicken. chicken. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know polla. That's it. I'm um, sure. Is there any other requests of... there or should I just play whatever? Yeah, yeah, there is. Uh, yeah, go for the request. Murmurs in a jar. Wow, I wonder if I could pull that off. <laughs> Fine. Yeah, there is bittersweet. More requests? There's bittersweet. I'm it's funny. I I see it and I'm like trying to think of how it goes. <laughs> uh as the sun shut down the pond. Sweet. 
think I just beautiful. Uh, okay, yeah, I gotta revisit that one. Sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> don't worry, beautiful, beautiful. Well, we all know that, right? Don't <laughs> have to like, um, yeah, I didn't like sit around practicing songs before uh, coming on here. So. I'm really impressed that you, you, you can just pull off you know any song of your catalog just like well, oh he's like this I, was, I just didn't i i couldn't remember how the uh that part that that where the lead comes up I was like the uh the chords behind it when i was like god i like go again oh i have to i have to listen to it and i'll go as soon as i hear it, i go oh yeah that's right okay <laughs> you have so you many beautiful play. ones yeah uh, i i do have a request i okay. do have a request let's see i never heard you playing this song so let's see if you if you can Tell me. Um, we did that. Um, and now I got to think of how that starts. <laughs> no, don't worry. Don't worry. That's a tough one. That's a deep cut. No, it's, it's, it's tough. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a pop quiz, right? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> the, 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 but there, there is one question because, you know, like, I tour with a lot of bands, me and Andrea, and we read a lot of book documentaries. And every time they mention you, you know, different bands and stuff, they always say, like, you are the most natural musicians they ever worked with, you know, in the studio, you know, touring. Like, it seems like you, you get a lot of respect from other artists. And they say, like, no matter the instrument, uh, if you're writing the song or just performing them, you are just a natural, even in singing and stuff like that. So... Going back to the question before, you know, the, the fact that you, you, you tried the, the way of, you know, making the, the, the career of music, you know, what, do you feel like you, you deserved more in a way? Because, you know, we all think you are one of the best in songwriting and performing and stuff. And, and that's a fact. Of course, there are many factors that, you know, influence the fact of someone having a commercial success or not. Right. But uh, do you feel like sometimes like, oh, I wish this thing w w was going different or, you know, why people don't like, you know, this right. music that they do as much as this other music that is similar, but not as good as this one? Right. No, I think that's a great question. And yeah, I've, I've felt all those things. I'm not going to say I haven't, you know, definitely have a lot of moments and still do every once in a while. They kind of creep up on me of getting a little green around the gills. You're like, fuck, well, you know, what do they got that I don't have, you know? Yeah. Um, so that does happen, you know? Um, but it's more important, you know, what do you do about it? You know? Mm -hmm. And like, exactly. I, I, you know, it, it, you got to, not to throw out a cliche here, but you got to accept what you can't change, you know? I mean, you just got to do the best that you can do. And, you mm -hmm. know, and also like wishing other people like, to not have success isn't going to change you at all. You know what I mean? Like if you say, Oh, you know, I wish ill on everybody else isn't going to make you do any better. So, yeah. you know, so I think that's really important to remember as well, but yeah, there are times, man. Like I, I think that, and it, it, it can be a really shitty feeling, you know, and it just brings you down to this place. You're like, fuck, like why, you know, why, why can't this move a little smoother than it is? And it's just, yeah. You know, I, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people <laughs> have gone. Yeah, through. no, no, because it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a question that we ask a lot of people that you interview, you know, the, uh, yeah. Frank Borman or, you know, or, or other artists, you know, because yeah. he's, a, he's a, I feel uh, he's down to expectations, you know, because then you have like people that is ruined by expectations, like even the, the you know, they, they put their expectations too high, which is can be, you know, making money with music or, you know, if you, it seems like uh, is a control of expectations that, you know, is, uh, is what is really important in the music world, because if you can accept, as you said, you know, what you have and uh, try to work your best, you, you just said something really important before you will do this no matter what, which yeah. is, I think, a feeling that we can share, you know, what we do with Panko Corduno. We don't get a dime. Probably we lose right. money a bit. Yeah. We just yeah. do it, you know. Right. Right. So, I mean, if you, and, and I would, and I, I would guess that if you, you know, like, a well, like it's called the worst, you know, the second worst Red Duno ever. Yeah. Right? So, it's, 
it, it, it's painful not to do it, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. So what we're having to do this via, you know, um, internet, just yeah. to kind of. Yeah, yeah. You stay we, together. You know. Yeah, do what we can do. You know what I mean? Because yeah. you know, and that's that's all you can do. So, yeah. well, I'm glad, and, and you, other, glad you did it. Thank you. <laughs> well, no, no, thank you. But the the other really cool part, and uh, you know, I I want to just mention the other cheats guys because they're they're really fantastic. Is that we do this in my in my opinion also because you know we we're you know we are all nerds or geeks or you know uh, punks and stuff and. The, when we get together, you know, even we, if we never met before, there is something that, you know, gets you closer to someone else. You know, you, you meet one guy in America and you share the same passion and suddenly you are the best friend, you know. So I think we do this, we do the tour. It, it, it is true for me. You know, when I go on tour, it's not only my job or, you know, to see another city, but to really the, the the importance of meeting other people and the connection you know when i think about the tour we did with the dime Peppy and the cheese i don't think about a particular show i particular about touring with you guys you know the, the personal parts which you know a lot of people tend to forget this part in music and this part of the punk world in general you know the, the connection you make with friends and stuff like that which is cliche of course but at the same time it seems like uh, is what really you know motivate us in some way, besides the music. I mean, not to be too sappy here, but I felt like when I met you, I like I've known you my whole life. Yeah, exactly, I exactly. Sure, but like I just just got to know you then. Yeah, you know, yeah I, there, there's a lot of uh, that happens a lot in the punk rock scene. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and do you you think it's because of passion we share, or is yeah. it because you know? I think that's part of it. Yeah. You know, I, I think it, it, a lot of it is that passion. You just kind of get each other, you know. Yeah. Huh. And and there is, a, I was wondering before, you know, we mentioned the fact that a lot of musicians, you know, really, you know, value you really high. And uh, there are other musicians that you work with, for you, you you just played with, for you, you 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 just like in the punk world that you really admire in a sort of you know songwriting level or in music level. Like other music, like in yeah. Tina, you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, other musicians that you you know just you, you oh, really yeah. admire. Yeah, I mean, I have all kinds of musicians that I admire for all kinds of reasons. You know, I have no lyricists, but, but, singers, favorite. I don't know. Like, no, but what, in the punk world, like people punk, that you you met that 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 you know personally. Like, I mean, I I think Kurt Baker's amazing. Okay, Kurt Baker's like the the best. I think melody maker out there yeah, yeah. i think yeah. frank portman's probably the best lyricist out there yeah um you know um also great great with melodies as well but like just you know his 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 words are like probably the best in in, in pop punk i think yeah um you know i was gonna like even like you know drew who was i played with in screeching weasel for a little bit it was in the jetty boys and just an amazing yeah guitar player like just freakishly good you know so i don't know a lot of people come to mind you know yeah. um a lot of a lot of producers too you know engineers as well yeah. so that's beautiful yeah I, i'm beautiful. glad that you mentioned cut baker because I, I i i'm with you on that you know and the fact and i think the fact that the, you know, you also change style a lot. You know, you, it does a little bit of power pop, a little bit of garage rock, a little bit of yeah. punk rock. Right. Makes him a little bit underrated from the punk community. In my opinion now, you know, he should be, you know, he's known and he can, right. you know, he has right. a record label, you know, right. so he's, you know, I think he's having a good career. But he, I think he's one of those guys that should deserve more in a sort of, you know, songwriting you know, stuff. So I, I'm glad that you, you mentioned yeah. that. And again, I think it all depends on, on what you like out of music as well. You know what I mean? Like, I think if you, if you really like songs with that uh, strong pops, pop sensibilities and hooks in it, then I, I yeah. don't know how you can't, you know, yeah. um, but people just hear things differently, you know, uh, for whatever reason. You know, I think I know there are people that really hear lyrics a lot. A lot of people really hear melody a lot. A lot of people just like riffs, you know, 
so it just it all kind of just depends you know yeah um it's all kind of a different kind of thing for me what, what do they got oh oh that, just that you know and just showing like the fact that people really really appreciate that you are you know your set of songs they're really happy to hear you you know a <laughs> lot of hearts a lot yeah. of hearts here <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm seeing i'm seeing hearts should i do anything else i probably should oh. um, we yeah. we have a we have a question here. Is there okay. chances that the Den Vapid and the Cheats live at Punk Rock Aduna will be released on vinyl? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, no one's approached me for that, so uh, <laughs> it's our fault. <laughs> it hasn't come up, David. Um, well, I, I I don't know. Um, let's see, let's see, let's discuss it. But you know, the thing is this, you know, because that set is. Uh, we didn't got unfortunately the set of uh, uh, the second set of them, Beppy and the Cheats, the one with the newer songs. So, like we we recorded the one of the Riverdale set, you know, the the the, the Riverdale set songs. And right. and to me, I really would like to do a live set of you know Cheats songs and then Beppy and the Cheats songs. In my opinion, because of course the show you did with the Riverdale songs is so fantastic, so emotional and stuff like that. Still, you know, I like all your catalog so you know the day we want to release a live album i think it will be perfect to have a best of <laughs> a vapid mania album <laughs> but we can you know on the wait we can release that I agree. one <laughs> I agree. all right i'm hearing a lot of ruckus upstairs i should probably do one song and then probably please please up. please yeah. let's Zoom. see if we have a request okay well, no, no, you you gone. You you. Okay. What, what is your favorite your favorite vapid song? I don't know. I have no <laughs> idea. Uh, yeah, I don't have a favorite. I, I I I don't. I'm always terrible at this. Like people, like, when they ask me like, "What's your top ten Ramon songs?" I'm like, I don't fucking know. Like, <laughs> a hundred of them, you know. Look okay, just Ramon's record. I'm like, you Just know, do the one that you come close to your mind. Cool, but you know, ask me next week, there'll be something else. You know, I'm <laughs> well, terrible at this shit. Let's do this. Just play the song that comes to your mind first. Like you know, All it's right. like okay, I do this. Let's watch the sunrise. Everything gonna be okay. You'll discover that you can't recover from the one. Away. Throw your arms around the world. Go and find another girl. Leave me on these cold and rainy days. Let's watch the sunrise. This is a lot of dawn. Stop your hibernating and lying in bed all day long. Throw your arms around the world. Go and find another town. Be beyond these cold and rainy days. Thank you. 
<laughs> one more mopes. All right, <laughs> we'll do one. We'll do one more, and then I, 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 I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to go. Well, thank you, then. Yes, perfect. Perfect. Like perfect. Going crazy upstairs. My wife's probably like not happy. Um, <laughs> let's do one mope song. This isn't easy for me to do I keep holding back and I don't know why I still haven't broke the news to you I just don't want to see you cry Oh, some people say that something's not meant to be Well, I know, baby, something that you don't believe well, I don't know how to say goodbye yeah. And I don't know how to say goodbye yeah. And I don't know how to say goodbye The hard part still hasn't been done I think about if this is really right for me I want to stick to my guns But I find it to be an impossibility Oh, some people say that something done not meant to be Well, I know, baby, something you don't believe That I don't know how to say goodbye That I don't know how to say goodbye That I don't know how to say goodbye Oh, baby, goodbye. Goodbye. I don't know how to say goodbye. 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 This was the best way to say goodbye. <laughs> At least for now. <laughs> Then, Beautiful, yeah. beautiful. Um, Andre, thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Dan. Thank uh, you so much for being no, with us. That that was fun. Um, so yeah, uh, like another almost a year from now, I yes. will see the physical Franz and Andre. <laughs> the physical version. I will yeah. be vaccinated. I will wrap my arms around you. And, I will you <laughs> and maybe even <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. We're waiting for yes. your new music, though. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, you're gonna keep us company during the winter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll keep you guys updated, um, for sure. Like I said, I don't have a date yet, but it's it'll be there soon, soon enough. So, anyway, yeah. thanks, yeah. thanks a lot for for having you're me. Welcome, Thank All you right. again, then. Later, man. Thank you. Bye, bye. -bye.
Oh my god. No, that was oh. good. <laughs> Wait, I I have to Oh. Ah. <laughs> oh. Okay, so while people is signing off <laughs> from the <laughs> <page, laughs> cuz our guest is gone and we are basically uh, wrapping up. <laughs> yes. What do you uh, think? It was uh, great. What do you Bye think, from guys? California. No, I think it's great. It's great that that, that Danny is always my favorite. He's like touring with him is fantastic, and uh, he's just you know, um, and I don't know. He's uh, from one side, you know, I, I feel like how lucky we are. We all are, you know, that we know we are basically living, you know, the fact that we are working and having friends with some of our, you know in my opinion, best artist in this music and also, you know, our heroes when we were younger, yeah. you know. Absolutely. At the same time, uh, I must say, uh, it sounds cheesy, I know, but, you know, that we, we did something, you know, we, we, you know, thanks to you and all the other guys, you know, that means we did something good, you know, that, you know, they, they it means a lot for Dan as well to come to Bergamo or to uh, Raduno and stuff and, you know, release yeah. records. So, you know, give... Because in these nights in particular, you feel like, you know, sometimes you're not going anywhere, you know, it's like, or, you know, your life is shit or is a failure. And then, you know, you get this and it's like, everything is rewarded. So it's, it's everything great. is going to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> but the only, the only, uh, what I was thinking while uh, speaking to Dan is that most of the, of the stories I have from touring with him uh, are from the years, uh, from the 2000 on. And yep. uh, those were kind of, you know, funny, wild years. <laughs> so many. Most of the stories I have about Dan, I could speak in public <laughs> <laughs> for many reasons. Uh, to not embarrass uh, him or people that plays in his band or my band as well. So <laughs> Beautiful, uh, beautiful. Well, yeah, in, the, in your book, in, in the Secret Andrea book. book. In the Secret Andrea book, in many years, we are going to write a book, not like the Bad Religion one, where there is nothing interesting at all. But, you know, we are going to do a Punk Rock Raduno and the, the Menges book and the Scaletta book and I Adonai book all together. The Gothic book, book of Punk Rock of Punk Rock, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> That that would be really good. That would be interesting. I mean, all yeah. the rest you can find on Wikipedia is the gossips I, that count. I I really I exactly exactly <laughs> you can find exactly. I I really hope in the next year I, I'm I have enough time to make some gossip for myself too. So we we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, Andre. We have a lot of stories. We yes. know. And Andre, I have to go back to Bergamo Pride and to wrap it up. And then from tomorrow on, we have this, uh, you know, month of preparation of Second World Straduna. So we still have a lot of stuff to, to, to yeah. reveal because we have well, a bigger, well, big announcement. Big announcement. And it's not a band. It's not a band. Like we have the biggest announcement ever we are going to make of Raduno, but it's not a, a band announcement. You know, the, the reason why this is the Raduno Space Edition. Are you talking exactly. About that? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And people. They, they don't have any idea of what we are gonna do this year, so <laughs> that that's gonna be interesting. I don't know. I don't even know how to explain them. What yeah, no, I've been so. I've been trying to explain it to some friends here, and uh, I found myself like, uh, are they? Can they believe me when I say this? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> that's that's the question. <laughs> Same thing. I try to write it. I try to show um, you know, sort of, you know draw something but they, they don't believe me so you know so you know it's, it's gonna be epic it's gonna be epic so it's gonna be good okay andre right. ciao france and thank you so much guys uh, we're gonna be yes, in touch thank you all network. guys uh, we're gonna be probably online next sunday i guess and uh, uh who knows france you and me we're gonna meet in on, on friday so yeah maybe we, gonna, we should do <laughs> let's do let's do that uh, ne next week because I think we are gonna go not gonna go live on Sunday evening probably but mm -hmm. maybe we can go live from La Spezia maybe from I don't know we'll see we'll yeah, see let's, let's, uh, let's see. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see we'll <laughs> see we'll do something special fantastic okay you take care France good night you guys too. ciao right. good night good night everyone <laughs>